Good afternoon, traders. My name is Brad Matheny. Today is April 1st, 2024, and this is a special announcement I am putting out to alert you to an incredible opportunity that I see setting up in the markets that really far too many people have uh, misunderstood. So many of you probably don't know who I am or what I do. Uh, for the past 25 years, all I've done is write specialized code and projects, developing financial modeling systems, quantitative research models, automated trading systems, and including retail and pr proprietary use um, modeling and trading systems for investors throughout the world. I developed these prototype systems using TradeStation and eSignal, amongst other platforms, and my job is to take an idea and turn it into a trading system. My real focus is to identify faults in the system and make improvements to turn the system into something more profitable. My business, Mint.com Technologies, is designed to be a very affordable solution for average traders. I'm not here to do uh, individual stock trades for you, although I do make recommendations, what I call hot stock picks, on my website through my Expert Growth membership. Expert Growth is the membership uh, solution I offer to individual traders like yourself. It's very inexpensive, uh, $499 a year, uh, basically 50 bucks, uh, uh, 48 bucks roughly a year. Um, and the long and short of it is there's a primary focus to all of this, which is to teach you to become a better trader. Trade only when opportunities exist for profits. Learn to use my proprietary algorithms that'll help you stick with profitable trades and avoid losses. Protect capital at all times. Learn the mechanics of intermarket dynamics with my custom indexes and proprietary algos. And explore more advanced, fully automated stock and futures trading systems. What I do, ladies and gentlemen, is teach you to become a more effective trader really honing your skills into um, having at least someone like myself doing extra research, telling you what I see, where the opportunities are, and how to get started in it. I offer a 30 or 60 day trial for $34.99. And remember, the real idea here is to grow and expand your opportunity as you are gaining knowledge. So it comes down to the fact that I offer my Mint Rotational Modeling System, which is the long-term investor trend system, my custom indexes that deliver specific market content related to trend expansion, contraction, and other factors, my multiple algos, my Mint.com Live Trades, Movers, and TT Scanner Hot Lists, which include these specialized trading signals for you. And then lastly, I deliver personalized research videos every week to help you understand what's going on, what to expect. And you're gonna see some of that today. I'm gonna to show you in this video, the great opportunity that's coming to you that nobody's really talking about, okay? I want you to understand that no, I haven't seen anybody produce a, a, a video like this showing you why I believe the markets may double in price over the next four or five years. So let's go ahead and get started before Again, before we go further, please take a look at my website, ment.com is the URL. Everything is right here. If you like what I'm trying to do and want to participate, it's right here ready for you. Uh, the content is delivered every weekend, every Sunday, and I run all of my members through a Discord channel to keep up to date with daily updates, communication, and content. Now let's go ahead and get started with the regular data. So part of the membership data is the Ment.com Rotationally Modeling System, which has been long for almost three years on a weekly basis, little over actually, uh, and for almost a year now on a daily basis. So ask yourself this question, have you been following research from people that have been telling you to get long or get short the market? Um, and have you been satisfied with that research? My research has continually kept my members long since April 12th, 2023, the SPY and the major indexes. Additionally, 
I deliver individual sector content here related to market trending daily and weekly, and I deliver these alternate allocation levels for traders. So hypothetically, I'm recommending 30% stocks, 30% cash, 25% metals, 15% bonds as a hedging mechanism for traders. Now, the cash recommendation can be deployed into any of the other uh, uh, allocation titles as needed, uh, but really trying to keep a reserve cash for dry powder is very, very important. Now, my Mint rotational modeling system has continued to outperform the SPY um, dramatically. We've seen new highs right here, seen new highs this year, big rally towards the end of 2023 into early 2024. This is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for us right now. And remember, this system has been long since April 2023. So again, this is performing very, very well. Um, and we're seeing extremely solid content. Now, some of the other data I provide relates to my custom indexes. This is the U.S. stock market index. You can see the rally phase here. This is a custom index. You won't get it anywhere else. I give personalized interpretation of all of this every week for individuals. This is my volatility index, which measures bullish strength, bearish strength, and potential topping reversal patterns. Additionally, we have other data. For example, my fear index and U.S. sentiment index. We have the uh, accumulation phase index chart, which just recently went into a new bullish trigger on a monthly price data. This is a, a cycle phase data. So we pushed the new highs. We're now in a new bullish trigger. And of course, we can go back to even further data here. Let me find it. Uh, we have this, the market rotation index, which is a measurement of accumulation distribution, general in the market, that's monthly. And one of my favorites here is the smart money index, which is indicated trending. So please understand that this entire move Everything here from October, November of last year has been in trending. It's very important you understand that my systems have kept members aware of trending that's taken place through, throughout the last six, seven months. This entire move has been trending, 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 trending. That's what this is telling us here, that we're in trending and we are currently in trending. The market should continue to push higher. Now, let's go ahead and move to the actual real data. Are you ready for the biggest opportunity of your lifetime? Let me come over here and over to here, and here you go. Get ready. The, this is a custom index of uh, monetary or money supply, M2 money supply in the United States. This is a custom index of the Dow Jones. This is a custom index. Uh, this is actually just gold. Now, what I'm trying to highlight here is the setup that is taking place that will likely prompt the Dow Jones to rally up to 65, maybe 67,000 from where we're at right now, possibly even higher. Okay, we have the potential of getting up into this 77 to $80,000 area on extended rally. And the reason this is taking place is two things. Number one, global central banks and the Federal Reserve have created a hyperactive market economy. We are now in a very speculative phase of the economy. And the risks to the global economy are more isolated to foreign markets. Let's call them Asia, Eastern Europe, and possibly Europe. These risks will reflect a contraction in asset prices over the next two or three years resulting in a rebalancing of hard assets. Those will be commodities uh, for use in construction and manufacturing and infrastructure. They will also reflect a rebalancing in uh, real estate and other assets, cars, um, tangible items. Think of tangible items, ladies and gentlemen. And this contraction of money supply that the Fed has actually put into place here since uh, October 2022, is a contraction in money supply that is resulting from the downward pressure 
of credit and debt markets overseas in, and throughout the world. My expectation is that this contraction in money supply in the United States will continue possibly out to 2026, 2027 before basing around this 618 Fibonacci level. And I believe that the strength of the U.S. economy, remember, the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Uh, economy has been deleveraging since 2008, 2009. Now, you, you can argue that, well, we've actually been over leveraging with derivatives or what have you. Okay, let's take that, uh, that, that argument and compare it to what actually happened overseas. Overseas, the 2008-2009 and COVID collapse really didn't do much to slow down um, overseas construction. Remember, we had the Belt Road project in China. We had massive growth of infrastructure projects throughout the world at that point. Uh, during the 2008-2009 crisis, China barely blipped. Um, it was a U.S.-based crisis event. Um, and it did affect world banks, but the Fed came in and resolved everything. Uh, the growth in the world throughout that time frame was based on the U.S. keeping near zero interest rates and allowing the rest of the world to profit from the Federal Reserve trying to reflate the economy. The Federal Reserve and the actions of the central banks continued to reflate the economy Throughout the 2007-8 time frame, this is the 2007-8 time frame year, and we saw this reflation carry all the way forward through 2017, 18, 19, 20 into and where we're at right now, which is a massive reflation phase. Even though the Fed has raised interest rates, even though the Fed is trying to tamp down inflation, even though the Fed is trying to constrict money supply, we're still seeing a very strong rally phase here. Why is that? It's very simple. The rest of the world is dealing with credit debt contraction, which will continue to deflate their economic um, function over the next two or three years, while the U.S. market seems immune to this. Why are we immune to it? Well, we had very low interest rates pushing up very high growth and wealth factors in stocks, in commodities, in homes. Uh, in Bitcoin, everybody, for the most part, has done very well if you're in the U.S. over the last five, seven, ten years, for the most part, if you were invested, you've seen tremendous growth. Remember, we're talking about a move from this level here all the way up to this level here. This is a 370% rally in the U.S. market, not counting the 300 to 400% rally in homes from their lows of 2010, 11, 12, and additionally, the rally in other assets that we've had. So we've had a tremendous 400%, let's say, rally phase here be between 2012 and now. Why would we think this would all of a sudden collapse? I can imagine everyone thinking, well, you know, it's just what happens. Naturally, this is what we're attuned to. The Fed raises interest rates. We see uh, the markets contract. We see debt and, and credit issues become a major problem. But look, the Fed has raised interest rates. We're already 20 plus months into the Fed raising interest, starting to raise interest rates in 2022. Um, we're really into an unusual phase in the market. And what I see is the U.S. market is somewhat immune to the global credit crunch. So, for example, if XYZ country, pick a country, ends up in some credit crisis because they borrowed too much money and they have no way to repay it, and they thought the Fed was going to keep rates at, at half a percent forever, the Fed is now likely in a position to try to raise rates again, maybe, maybe a quarter, maybe a half or three quarters of a percent over the next 12 to 18 months. The reason being is the economy, the U.S. economy, is still running hot. We're still having moderately strong inflation, which is what we want, actually, moderate inflation. We're seeing economic growth. We're seeing orders and, and uh, PMI growth, CPI growth. We're seeing a, a very hot economy right now. A, a good way to put it would be to look at, uh, hypothetically, the mid-90s, 
during the early dot-com bubble phase where the, the Fed was raising rates, home prices in the U.S. consolidated and constricted downward, uh, but the economy was operating fairly hot. Nothing was going to stop this until we ran into, again, the, the uh, terror 9-11 uh, uh, event in New York, and then we ran into uh, the dot-com bubble burst right before that, and then eventually we ran into the global financial crisis, which may happen way out here in the future. I do believe that somewhere out here, 2029, 20, 30, 31, which is a 100-year cycle event for the major markets, uh, since the 1929 crash is going to be very critical. This area right here, very critical for a major crisis event. But I do believe that between now and this time frame, we are in a parabolic upward speculative phase. Meaning, unless something moves in to disrupt the U.S. economy, and I believe the Fed will do everything in their power to prevent that from happening, I believe that we are in a very strong uptrend. And I believe that the U.S. markets, the SPY, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, and many sectors could continue to push a minimum of 40% to maybe 100, 110% higher than where we're at right now. Now understand, that would mean that the SPY could be trading at, call it, 999 or maybe 1100 The Dow Jones would likely be trading around seventy-five to 85000 The NASDAQ would probably be trading somewhere around 39000 to maybe 45000 whereas currently it's trading at 18000 right now. What was going to keep this? What would keep this uh, process operating? A strong dollar, moderately strong U.S. economy, a depreciation in moderate depreciation in hard assets across the globe. That would mean a, a revaluation in things like homes, cars, which we're already seeing. Demand is starting to weaken. Home prices are starting to come down. Um, but what we're seeing is a very hot economy. The economic data is still very, very strong. And remember, the Fed has already raised rates considerably. At this point, you would think the economy would be constricting faster, but it's not. It's actually expanding. And this is because the Fed allowed the economy to move into superheated um, economic function after COVID. The entire post-COVID stimulus and operational function of the Fed was to prevent a global crisis event. What they did is they moved us into a superheated economic mode, which is going to be very similar to 1929. Now, let's, let's, for the fun of it, come over here and take a look at gold. And I will go to Dow Jones. Hopefully, I haven't drawn a bunch of stuff on here. We will go to monthly. And we will come over here, auto scale, and go all the way back to 1929. There you go, folks. So now this is monthly data from TradingView, 1929. I suspect that we are somewhere in this area right now. I suspect that we're somewhere in this area, moving up into this area. Uh, turn that off. And I suspect we're going to go through a bit of a consolidation over the next year or 12 months related to the presidential election cycle. And then we're going to move into this parabolic phase which is essentially a 100% move from where we're at right now. That's 190%, so I will fix that by coming up to about here. There's 124. There you go. That's our 100% move. And I believe we are riding through this upward channel here with the presidential election cycle taking place in 2024. Then we will begin this rally phase here, a big expansive rally phase which again could double your investment capital, maybe even triple your capital if you know how to play it. Now understand, there's a bunch of doomsayers out there. Everybody seems to want to tell you that the market's going to crash. Looky over here, everything is going to fall apart. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, I really do believe that we have set up 
a hyper-speculative economy, kind of like the end of the Roaring Twenties over here. And just like we see right here, this is the 1925-24, very similar. We're in this moderate upward reflationary phase, moving into an election year cycle here, 2024, and then moving into the speculative phase, which will be essentially 2026, 27, 28, maybe into 2029 before we find this peak. So understand that you really have to pay attention to the cycles that are playing out and where the opportunity here is. So the Dow Jones and the SPY and the NASDAQ may double, may move somewhere between, let's call it 55% to 110% higher over the next four to five years. Gold, understand that all the money that's been dumped into the economy here has, is going to push gold up to $4,500 an ounce. You have to bear with me and understand that the amount of money that has been dumped in the economy since essentially 2015 has been $12 trillion. Gold was trading about $1,300 an ounce in 2015 after pulling back considerably from around $1,900 an ounce. Um, so if you were to simply take uh, the 1300 uh, price for gold and realize that we have now increased the uh, core element of capital throughout the world. We've increased the derivatives capital. We've increased the entire function of the economy by about 350 to 400%. If you take into consideration the fact that we've doubled the amount of money out there in the operating uh, structure of the global economic environment, uh, and gold has traded now up into this this 2,250 area. Um, I believe the core value of gold, once it's fully appreciated with regard to risk factors right now, should be 4,700 roughly dollars right now. That's the core value of gold. But it's still going to take a while for gold to reflate. The reason it's going to take a while for gold to reflate, sorry about that one of my other systems, is that gold is going to become a more functional uh, hedging instrument as the fear cycle starts to really ramp up. So understand we've come out of this. Fear is very mellow right now. Based on my uh, custom index, we're, we're in a very low fear environment. We're in a contracting monetary uh, supply environment orchestrated by the Fed. Um, the U.S. markets are continuing to rally on strong economic data and earnings. Nobody's really paying attention to gold. Gold is moving higher, but it won't really start to collect uh, a, a uh, uh, let's call it a consensus uh, view, a popular, uh, pop, popular consensus view of being uh, undervalued until probably into 2027 and 2028 where all of a sudden people are going to realize gold should be trading around 3750 maybe 4250 as a core value hedging against what the fed is going to do now remember i'm speculating that we're going to continue to dump about 2 trillion dollars a year into money supply based on what the us government is doing and i believe that will continue to elevate gold all the way up above the $7,500 level. So be aware, folks, there's a huge opportunity for you to see certain sectors, not everything, but certain sectors will rally extensively. I can tell you confidently that I believe the SPY, the NASDAQ, and the Dow Jones are all capable of moving 55 to 110% higher between now and 2028. Remember, that's only basically three and a half to four years from now that the markets are capable of doubling, potentially doubling in price as we go forward. So again, you're not going to probably hear this from anybody else. I'm putting it out here April 1st. This is not an April Fool's joke. This is a legitimate claim that I believe that the U.S. markets are going to pull an incredible parabolic move to the upside that nobody is seeing. And if you keep listening to these people that are telling you the stock market is going to crash, 
uh, you are going to miss the biggest opportunity of your lifetime over the next four years. Now, yes, after 2029-30, we have a bigger risk of a downward price event. Uh, and there's a lot of mechanics that come into this showing us why I believe this is actually happening. GAN, Fibonacci, other technical analysis confirms what I'm telling you here, folks. Um, it's just that, like I said, everybody loves selling the fear. And you will go broke trying to short this market all the way up if you listen to people who don't actually have a clue as to what's going on. So now, I'm sticking my neck out here. I'm telling you what I believe is going to happen. But I'm also going to add a caveat that a massive global event, such as massive war, such as massive U.S.-based uh, crisis, if we were to have some massive U.S.-based crisis, then yes, I believe that we could see the U.S. markets turn around. But it would have to be uh, a, a U.S.-centric or it would have to be something like another massive pandemic. Think of the Black Plague hits uh, the United States, spreads all over the world, and takes the global economy down with it. Something like that could disrupt this move. Otherwise, if nothing comes along to disrupt this move upward in the next three and a half roughly years, I believe we are going to see the U.S. stock market attempt to double somewhere between 55% higher and 100% or more higher over the next three and a half years. And again, please remember that you can come right here, mint.com, start your expert growth 60-day trial, follow my research. I'm here to try to help you. All of my algos, all of my systems are designed to help you stay ahead of these huge market moves. I keep telling everyone, the next five years are guaranteed to be extremely volatile and full of opportunity for skilled traders and investors. Here I, I'm telling you right now that I, I see the markets potentially doubling in value in the next three and a half to four and a half years before reaching a top. Are you ready for this? If not, join Expert Growth and let me help you. Okay, guys, that's it. Talk to you later.